Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to do something slightly different. Let me explain. This is one of my two 3D printers. It's um, a cube for which I got the design uh, from Thingiverse. I'll drop a link down below. And the idea here is to use all the internals from an ANET A6 printer, which basically all these things are, um, and then printing much more sturdy frame and connectors for that. So that you end up with a printer that really cannot deviate in any way in terms of flex in the frame. And you'll see that uh, that's part of the standard kit and um, I went ahead and printed this box for the side to hide the electronics As you can see I pick up quite a bit of dust just because it's in a bit of a dusty environment and aside from that nothing special oh I did um, I did we let me just lift this thing I do have a quite a unique connector for the belt at the bottom there that keeps the belt both parallel and quite well tensioned. The one thing that I haven't installed yet is on top here there's a attachment that you can print um, to support this screw. You see there's a little bit of flex in the screw here and the same with the other side. I've actually got these supports printed for that which then puts them into a, a bearing so that they also cannot really go anywhere but if you think about the back support there is solid I don't have focus the back support there is solid so the, the screw really doesn't make all that much of a difference so the purpose of today's video as you probably saw from the oh and I run this entire thing through Octoprint with, um, with the Raspberry Pi because my printers sit in the shed and I work for my study Part of this upgrade will also be adding a camera to the setup so that we can record time lapses and see what's going on. But the main upgrade is this guy over here. Now, uh, my mate Francois, who you guys have seen on the channel, also bought an ANET A6. And when he's arrived, we realized that it's a much more updated version of the ANET A6. And it's down to this guy. So we ordered some new main boards from Banggood. And the old main board is a version 1.5, where this one reportedly is a version 1.7, as is indicated there on the main board. All right, and just small few differences. Um, the little reset button here is a is a button as opposed to like a small button on the on the bed on the old one. This fuse here is new, that's going to prevent the thing from catching fire. Um, and then these connectors here, a hell of a lot more sturdy than on the old one. But you'll see, I decided here to go with a MOSFET switch for the bed over there. Um, so the, the electronics here, which has a tendency to melt and burn out, um, they drive my MOSFET switch. And the MOSFET switch then takes power directly from the power supply and puts it onto the bed. Another major difference on this board over here is the little insignia over there, if I can get it into focus, which reads, let me see if I can zoom in on that. My goodness, can you believe this, battling with light. Well, if you take my word for it, it reads 12 to 24 volts, indicating that this board can operate from 12 to 24 volts. Now, I believe the only difference there is that you'll be able to heat up the bed and the head much quicker if you're going to use 24 volts we may actually try that in future so basically what we're going to do now strip down the electronics on this guy swap all the plugs across and in theory our printer will then run on the newer software so what i'll do quickly before i start the upgrade is just switch on the printer and show you what the lcd screen a layout looks like on the old version and then we'll be able to compare that with what it looks like once this new version is installed uh, another top tip 
is these connectors over here uh, do put lugs on the end of them. Um, they tend to last a lot longer if there's lugs on here rather than just trying to push the wires in there and, and, and um, tightening them down. The wires don't make the same good connection. All right. Let, um, I'll check in with you in a couple of minutes when I've switched on the printer to show you what the LCD display looks like and then we're going to swap the connectors across and see if this can will work again. Right, so no real drama, just a startup printer ready. Obviously the, the Raspberry Pi is not connected at the moment. Info, prepare, position, control, configuration, SD card, no, version. Anet version 2.0, although the board is a version 1.5. Interesting. Cool. Let's do the upgrade and see what it looks like. Right, so halfway through the upgrade process, we've swapped the board out by just taking a specific wire and putting it in the same place as we took it from. All these plugs are indexed so you can't really mess them up and they are typically labeled on the board as well as on the on the little wire so again can't really mess them up. Let me show you why it's a good idea to upgrade to lugs. This is what typically happens with the original board. It gets too hot and then it melts and that's what starts the fire on these boards. So, great idea to rather upgrade to lugs so that you don't get this sort of failure. The board itself works perfectly, it's just that portion that failed. Now, we did mention that we're going to do a couple of other upgrades while we're busy, and this is one of them. So, that's the original anchor point for the upright over here uh, and the lead screw and then what we realized is that our lead screws are probably about a centimeter half an inch a little bit more less than half an inch too short and they don't actually reach the top of the bearing over here to take that little bit of plain wobble out that I showed you previously so I'm gonna go rush out and get some lead screws quickly and then the final upgrade that we will do is the little camera so that we can do time lapses on this guy. I'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. This was a little bit more of a mission to do than what I thought. But if you compare it to the original anchor, which just tied down with two little screws, this one now has two screws on the side and two at the bottom, and it's a much more beefy assembly with the lead screw coming through the actual bearing over here and the guide also sticking into the and the result of that is there's there's no movement here no movement in any direction so i'm going to call that a definite win and now we can start reassembling the printer so that we can make our first well do setup and then first test print setup as in I messed up every single axis of this thing and having to remove all these things. So I need to obviously level the bed, um, adjust the height of everything and just get that basically right. And like a wally, I forgot to switch on the mic when I recorded this little bit. So this is the first startup with the new board. And as we switch it on, you see there's a slight difference there. Now it says E16 version 1.6 instead of the version 2 that we had on the other board. And the display looks quite a bit different. You don't have the 3D printing logo in the left top corner anymore. Next thing is that there are a lot fewer menu items. So this almost seems like the software is more basic than the previous software was. Um, there's no configuration menu and a couple of other things missing over here so we're going to have to make some test prints and see if this printer is gonna behave the way we think it will a little longer than a few minutes later right Houston so we have a small problem this is octoprint 
and if I click on that arrow over there, I'm expecting the bed to come forwards, no sorry, to go backwards away from me. If I press the other button, so it seems to be inverted. Let's try and confirm that. I'm pressing the home key. See, and it's going forward instead of backwards. Okay, so that's clearly not good. Let's press the home key on the other axis, although this thing's not lined up. Okay, so that seems to work okay. I'm going to heat up the head quickly and see because there's a stepper motor here as well. So we know the step motor at the back there is the wrong way around. And what I'm going to do to fix that is the easiest way to do it because there's no settings in the software is just to re-pin the plug. So literally just reverse the order. I just want to see if this stepper motor runs the right direction because we know that that, which one, that one, that one on the side there runs properly. The left to right works properly. That's right. That's left. So that works properly. So so far it's the bed that's not that's inverted, and I need to check that this oak here is okay. Let me quickly do that. Right. So I asked it to heat up, heat up the head and heat up the bed, and that seems to be working okay. Okay, so the head is sufficiently heated for PLA. And let's see what it does. Five millimeters extrude. Oh, hang on. That's not good. <laughs> okay, that motor is also inverted. When I say retract, it extrudes. Okay, so let me repin these two very quickly and then we'll test again. Right, so repinning these things, I've already done blue and black. It's really easy, nice small little screwdriver. And just get it underneath there so that you can pull the little cable out and then swap them. Obviously very, very important, if you're going to be doing this, unplug the printer completely. Disconnect it from all power sources, electricity, anything like that. Both the printer and like I'm doing the Raspberry Pi over here, Raspberry Pi also needs to be disconnected because um, the Raspberry Pi will get power from the printer and the printer will get power from the Raspberry Pi. So that makes it dangerous, you're going to blow up your shit. Okay, so that's, that's the job basically done. And now the wires are in there. So make sure you press down these little pins again. Voila! Now I can replug it and then we can go test if this was successful. Okay, time to test again, but let's heat up the head in the meantime. And then let's do it here. And prepare auto home. Better. Alrighty, so we've got everything turning in the right directions and we were able to obviously bed level and calibrate. Obviously not really good on the bed leveling as you can see there. I need to redo it maybe one more time. Um, what we did realize was, and let me just cancel this print quickly, what we did realize was that the printer wasn't set up properly in terms of the amount of steps um, required so it was printing way small like probably 20% smaller than what it was supposed to print and to address that situation I wonder if it's control motion 60 then from motion steps per millimeter and these top two were at 80 so I've now set them to 100 each um, and then we'll do a test print to see it's going to be a, a 
20 millimeter by 20 millimeter test print to see how that is in terms of where it's supposed to be. That's now as soon as I can get the bed leveling sorted out. I'll check back in with you soon. Cool, bed leveling sorted out. We are printing. It looks pretty promising in terms of the size, but we'll only be able to tell once obviously it's off because here we're dealing with hundreds of millimeters, uh, one hundredths of a millimeter and smaller so it could be out by one millimeter or less and we will have to obviously fix that but just look at this setup it is solid i'm pretty sure i'll be able to pick this printer up and it will just carry on printing there's no room for wiggle or movement anywhere anymore and here's our result now this is why you don't make adjustments while printing. I sort of forgot to tighten up the X axis screw that's sitting over here. So this belt was very, very loose and I decided to tighten it up. Over there, you can see it caused a step. Insofar as size is concerned, if we measure the X, that is almost a millimeter too big. Uh, checking it closer, it's like a half a millimeter too big. Yes, I wish I can get this thing to focus. Nope, she ain't gonna focus. I'm backing the light. Okay, in any case, it's about a half a millimeter too big. If we look at the z-axis, z-axis is spot on. And if we look at the y-axis, which we obviously have to do carefully now because that's the one that... That is... Wow. That is like a tenth of a millimeter too small. So I have to go half a millimeter down on X and a tenth of a millimeter up on Y. Hmm, interesting. Let me do that. Okay, so we eventually gave up on the ANET boards that we bought. Well, not exactly on the boards that we bought. I came across a YouTube channel called Crosslink. Daniel. Daniel, thank you so much for all your help. Um, I managed to load, according to your instructions, the Marlin software on both my printers. And um, I wonder if you guys can see that. The quality is out of this world. Superb. Um, Daniel's got a really interesting channel. He's bringing to printers, makers together, they've got a Discord channel, I will link all of that down below. As he points out in one of his videos, when you buy Chinese or Banggood, well, the moment you buy this stuff, it's pretty much outdated. The suppliers are not going to update the firmware or anything like that, and you're basically stuck up the creek without a paddle. Um, this was all fixed with the Marlin 2.0, well, like 2.05, I think it's something like that, the version that I eventually loaded. And, uh, oh yes, Daniel, um, two of my boards, well, the two new boards that I put into here, had boot loaders and I was able to load them, but the two old boards that come out, came out of here, I'm still battling to load a boot loader, but I'm really not really concerned about that. That's pretty much going to be a wrap for this video. Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, do like, share and subscribe and do go check out Daniel if you're into 3D printing you won't be wasting your time just look at the quality see you next time always remember that life is too short to drive boring cars